in compliance with the directive of the Chief Justice of Nigeria that special courts be established for speedy determination of corruption and financial crime cases. Two High Court judges in Plato's State Judiciary have been designated to hear expeditiously and to also dispose of all corruption cases in the state. The Chief Registrar of Plato's State Judiciary says that the judges will handle such cases alongside other cases before their courts with special attention on corruption cases. There are some corruption cases that are pending before the courts, the high courts in the state, which have been prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, that is the EFCC, and uh, the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, that is the ICPC. Now, these cases and some that are prosecuted by the Ministry of Justice, the State Ministry of Justice as well, and the Nigerian Police Force, these cases, I'm sure the, the, the desire is to see that the cases are being handled by these courts that the, my lord, the acting chief judge, has so designated. Uh, they are to be handled by these courts so that they will be determined at least within the shortest time possible. Now, talking about the directive by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, a coordinator, Lagos State Restorative Justice, Ben Iwago, speaks to us about how the creation of this special court will reduce or not corruption in Nigeria and also other issues. I agree that there is a necessity to fast-track corruption cases. And such courts, special courts, are not new. So it's a good innovation, so long as it respects the fundamental, basic, entrenched rights of those who get to face trial in such courts. If it will amount to stampeding justice, if that is the whole essence, because for me, except we are veering off from the fundamental provisions in our constitution, which is fundamental to whatever courts you create, and talking specifically about fair hearing and fair trial. So long as those rights are respected, good and fine. It's okay to uh, uh, create special courts. But for me, again, I think another fundamental question is our criminal justice jurisprudence. There are other ways that these things could be resolved. But the system of justice we operate is adversarial. Uh, I, I, law of evidence is adversarial. You've got to prove your cases, except I've not read the full uh, directives of the C, uh, CJN. If it's going to say, okay, proof, or maybe it's not more, no more going to be tried, it's going to be an inquisition where you are assumed guilty and you are, you, you are left the burden of proving your innocence. But if not, that we're going to go through the normal process of proofs, evidence, and all this, there are rules that you can stampede. So I think beyond creating special courts, corruption can equally be fought in a much more fundamental way. Why would people, why would one steal something if he believes that he has a part in that? That's the question. The other issue is what are the values? So there are many issues that are contingent on uh, 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 the corruption uh, issue. It's not just about creating special courts. Yes, you've created special courts, but you must respect the fundamental rights of the people who come before the accused persons. I know that in law, the burden of proof is on the prosecution to prove beyond reasonable doubt that an offense has been committed. But now it looks like you're switching it that the burden of proof now lies with the accused person in this special court. Do you want to expand on that? No, I was making a point to say, if the whole essence of creating special courts is to stampede justice, in which case it becomes an inquisition, under an inquisition, you are presumed guilty. You come before the court to prove your innocence. But if we are going to yet rely on our extant criminal justice system, the law of evidence, fair hearing and all that, then it must run its processes. So that's the point I'm making. And that is what led me to say that there are fundamental issues to corruption which need to be addressed. Corruption can as well be fought through institutional means. So for me, 
I, I just pray that the judiciary is not being stampeded. How do you think this special courts, the creation of this special courts, will help reduce corruption or, you know, tackle corruption or even affect our judicial system in Nigeria? As an individual, I do not think so. The whole essence, I guess, is to uh, fast track the trial. If that is the case, then well, I'm fine. But for me to fight corruption is a much more fundamental question that has to do with our nationhood. It has to do with the, 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 the equity in the distribution of opportunities and privileges. If I believe in a relationship, I will not be acting contrary to that relationship. The courts that we are even creating special courts, how well are the judges taken care of? How many, I mean, look at the average cost list of a judge on a day who is doing long hand. So a judge, a magistrate, a police officer is first a human being. So for me to fight corruption, we need to start from our nationhood. We need to get all of us to agree to the fact that this country belongs to us. And that has to be very practically expressed. I want to ask a question that's a little bit away from what we're talking about, but somewhat related. How, do you, how does a person that has high moral grounds handle a case, a defense case, whereby he's aware that the accused person is guilty? Uh, yeah, there's always been this tension between law and morals. But the fact remains that a lawyer is trained to defend your client, whatever is the case. You can't refuse him because he's a bad man. That said, the concept also of plea bargaining is gaining traction, in which case uh, you negotiate. The accused person says, okay, yes, I did this, but can we? So that's another way on, uh, that uh, somebody who feels a moral compulsion to either reject can deal with such issues. The other way is that there are other justice systems that fuse in some reasonable measure the issue of morality and law. For instance, restorative justice. The accused person accepts guilt. Then you begin to walk around the fact that how do we make amends? How do we repair the harms you have created? And that can now come about reparation and returning what has been stolen and all that. So they, apart from our present system, there are other methods by which we can fight corruption, by which accused persons are given opportunity to own up to uh, their offenses or to their crime. But under our present adversarial system, that is its nature. You must prove beyond reasonable doubt. How do you rate our judicial system in Nigeria with all of the things going on? I would say given the circumstances under which the judiciary is operating, they are doing very well. Considering the great constraints, courtroom infrastructure is next to nil. You're just having a sprinkling of new courtrooms springing up. So that's one. Then given as well the processes of our, 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 our criminal justice system, Investigations are there. A case will not be properly investigated, it's thrown into the court, and you expect the judge or the magistrate to quickly find guilty and sentence? No. So I would say that our courts are doing their best in the circumstance, but they could do better by standing their grounds and dealing with issues of proven uh, cases of corrupt persons. because. You have Judases everywhere. In every 12, there must be Judas. But we are not going to say, because of one Judas, let's crucify the 11 apostles.